somewhere in your own community, on some street or back alley, this action is probably being duplicated at this moment. Efficient sanitary collection of garbage and refuse is becoming an accepted part of our American way of life. Unfortunately, the job doesn't end with efficient collection. These truckloads of accumulated wastes must be disposed of, but where and in what manner is a community problem? The garbage disposal methods most widely used are open dumping, hog feeding, incineration, mechanical disposal, and sanitary landfill. Probably the most convenient, as far as the householder is concerned, is by mechanical grinding and release into the sewer system. This method effectively removes organic wastes and is considered both safe and sanitary. The main disadvantage is that only one portion of household wastes is removed. Tin cans, yard refuse, and ashes must still be removed by another method. Another disadvantage is that each home must be equipped with a disposal unit to make the operation 100% effective. Some communities dispose of their garbage by feeding it to hogs. This method has in some instances resulted in a slight profit, but has been universally condemned by public health authorities. Feeding areas breed flies and rats and give off objectionable odors. More important, the consumption of insufficiently cooked pork from garbage-fed hogs is one of the chief sources of human trichinosis. Other objections are that the householder must make the necessary separation of feed from other wastes, and since only the edible garbage can be fed to hogs, the remaining material must still be disposed of in some other manner. Municipal incinerators have long been considered the most satisfactory method of disposal of garbage and many types of refuse. There are, however, three main disadvantages to incineration. One is the extremely high cost of building the plant. Another is that the amount of material that can be handled is limited to the size of the incinerator. Unexpected increases in community growth may overload the plant. Like many other methods, Incineration fails to solve the problem presented by non-combustible material. Ashes and tin cans must still be hauled away for further disposal. The only thing that is ever said in favor of the open dump is its apparent economy. The disadvantages, however, make this method over a period of years the most expensive possible from the standpoint of community health. Open dumps not only destroy the value of surrounding property, but prevent community expansion in nearby areas. More important, the open dump is a prolific breeding ground for all manner of diseases. Flies and rats spread these diseases throughout the community. Flies are known to spread typhoid fever, dysentery, diarrhea, and possibly polio. Garbage dump rats, which multiply by the thousands, have been found to spread both murine typhus and Wilde's disease. For the majority of communities, the most satisfactory method of garbage and refuse disposal is the sanitary landfill. The landfill method consists merely of burying, compacting, and covering refuse on a big scale. It is economical, sanitary, eliminates flies and rats, adds to the value of certain types of property, utilizes wasteland, and disposes of all types of refuse. Landfills are constructed by one or more pieces of regular earth-moving equipment. The basic tool is a track-type tractor equipped with a bulldozer blade. Two main methods are in general use. The trench method consists of a series of trenches which are excavated by the tractor. As each truckload of garbage is dumped into the trench, it is spread and thoroughly compacted. All types are handled, including dry trash, non-combustible rubbish, edible and non-edible garbage in any proportion. The weight of the tractor traveling back and forth 
effectively crushes the tin cans, bottles, tree limbs, and miscellaneous refuse into solidly packed layers. This packing operation is the most important step in the construction of a proper landfill. At the end of the day, after all collection trucks have reported in, the tractor covers the refuse with earth, forming a permanent protective layer. Final compaction of the earth layer seals off the refuse from flies and rats. The dangers and nuisances of fire, smoke, and objectionable odors are eliminated. Where the land is less level or where low-lying land is being utilized, the area method is sometimes used. No trenches are constructed in this method. The refuse is spread over a large area, compacted, and cover material is dozed in from nearby hillsides or brought in by truck. The choice of the method to be used depends generally upon the location of the site, its drainage characteristics, and the topography of the area. The choice of equipment to be used will depend upon the method, location, and number of fills to be constructed. Many communities use a front-end loader mounted on a track-type tractor, either hydraulically or cable-controlled. This tool is ideal for the trench method, as it can both dig and haul the cover material. The operation is basically the same as when using a bulldozer blade. After the trench is dug, the refuse is thoroughly spread by the tractor traveling back and forth over the fill. With the front end loader, cover material can be hauled from a nearby trench or from stockpiles, and at the end of each working day, the fill is effectively sealed and compacted. When the amount of refuse is too great to be effectively handled by the tractor alone, the four-wheel scraper and the tractor bulldozer make an ideal combination. These units combine large carrying capacity with the ability to haul over longer distances. In some larger cities where several separate fills are to be maintained, the independent one-man operation of these machines answer the problem. In some instances, the tractor-bulldozer combination is equipped with a drag line attachment. This unit works to advantage in swampy, low-lying areas where footing is so soft and wet as to make other equipment difficult to operate. After the trench is dug by the drag line, the bulldozer is used to spread, compact, and cover the fill. In large metropolitan areas, the amount of refuse to be handled runs into hundreds of truckloads a day. Thousands of yards of material must be handled. An effective combination under these conditions is a self-propelled drag line and a tractor bulldozer. The drag line excavates the trench and stockpiles the cover material. The tractor bulldozer spreads the garbage, compacts it, dozes the cover material into position, and finishes off the fill. Regardless of the size, from communities of a few thousand to cities as large as New York, there is an equipment set up to do the job. The final answer to size and type will depend on local conditions. The sanitary landfill method of refuse disposal provides for year-round operation. Heavy track-type earth-moving machinery is designed to work in all kinds of weather. In a well-planned, efficiently supervised landfill, the daily operation is just as effective in winter as in summer. Most communities in the cold weather zone provide for winter operation 
by digging extra trenches and stockpiling cover material during the late summer and fall of the year. When the snow falls and the surface and subsoil freeze, cold weather operation is carried on efficiently and effectively. The one restriction to the sanitary landfill is that it requires additional land. This is usually no great problem except in very large cities where haul distances would be prohibitive. The advantages of the landfill method are many. It permits the collection of both garbage and refuse at the same time, lowering collection costs. It permits the use of disposal sites located closer to populated areas. It requires less initial investment than any other acceptable method. The yearly operating cost is one-third to one-half the cost of incineration. It eliminates fire, smoke, odor and insect nuisances and the health dangers resulting from disease-carrying rodents. It reclaims sub-marginal lands for future community expansion, such as highways, ball fields, airports, parks, and playgrounds. In many cases, the increased value of the land has gone a long way toward meeting the original investment. Sanitary, efficient refuse disposal is a must, important both to public health standards and progressive community expansion. The responsibility for sanitary refuse disposal falls upon every citizen. Your local officials can only provide the necessary legislation. It takes your support to have this legislation adopted. With Sanitary Landfill, you too can turn a community problem into a community playground. <laughs>